we're looking at 9.3, which is solving quadratic equations. And uh, we've already looked at solving quadratic equations by factoring. So now we're going to look at solving quadratic equations by graphing and by finding the roots of the equation. So here's standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. The difference here is that now it equals 0 as opposed to y or f of x. So when you're solving by graphing, uh, there are three possibilities. You can have two solutions, which is when it hits the x-axis in two different places. You can have one solution, which is when it hits the x-axis in one place, or the vertex is on the x-axis. Or you could have no real number solution. So these are the ones that are either going to be above the x-axis or below the x-axis, so they'll never hit the x-axis. Remember that your x-intercepts are your solution. Um, they are your roots. So what, however many x-intercepts you have, that's how many solutions you have. So let's look at these two examples. If we were to graph uh, the first example, all I really need to find is the axis of symmetry, the vertex and the direction of opening. As long as I know that, I know if it's going to cross the x-axis or not. So I'm going to do kind of like a rough sketch just so I have an idea of how many solutions this would have. So here are A, is 1, our b is 0, and our c is 5. So, uh, when we go to find our axis of symmetry, and we plug in our b and our a, we have 0 over 2 times 1, or just x equals I don't know why this is doing that. So x equals 0. So whenever you're missing your b, your axis of symmetry is going to end up being x equals 0 because when you have b on the top of the fraction, it's always going to end up being 0. So we know our axis of symmetry is x equals 0. We're going to draw our axis of symmetry in here. And then if we plug that in, you can kind of ignore the 0 when you're plugging in. So I'm going to plug into the x squared plus 5. So 0 squared plus 5 is going to give me 0 plus 5 or just 5. So there is the y of my vertex, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's my vertex. And the direction of opening, since a is positive, I know is going to be up. So since this opens up, I'm not going to get exact points right now because I just want to find out how many solutions there are. This never crosses the x-axis. And since my solutions are my intercepts and this will not have intercepts, then I know that this is a no real root solution. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and try the next one. Uh, find the axis of symmetry, the vertex, and the direction of opening and see how many solutions you have. Okay, so go ahead and check your answer. Your axis symmetry again is x equals 0 because b is 0. When you plug that into your x squared, you get negative 12. So 0 comma negative 12 is our vertex. I went by 2s, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And then it goes up because the a is positive. So I know it's going to hit the x-axis in two places. I don't know exactly where because I didn't find exact points. But I do know that it will have two solutions. Our next method of finding um, our roots is by solving uh, using square roots. So you can only use this method if you don't have a b. Because if you don't have a b, you only have the x squared, then what you can do is solve for x squared, get x squared by itself. So your first step is going to be to add 75 to both sides, which will leave us with 3x squared equals 75. Now since we want to get x by itself, our next step is to divide by 3, 
which will leave us with x squared equals 25. And since we have to get the x squared by itself, I need to take the square root. So if I take the square root of both sides, this will cancel out my square, which will leave me with just an x, but every radical, every root, has two possible roots, a positive and a negative. Because a positive 5 times a positive 5 is positive 25, and a negative 5 times a negative 5 is also a positive 25. So you have to make sure to take into account that there are two roots. So this becomes just x, and this is plus or minus 5. If I were to write this as my x-intercepts, I would write 5 comma 0 and negative 5 comma 0. I have two roots, two solutions, or two x-intercepts. So go ahead and try uh, the first one, the first three. Okay, so on your first one, you see that you ended up with a positive 36 under the radical. You take the square root, you get plus or minus 6. So you have two solutions, a positive 6 and a negative 6. In your x-intercepts, it would be 6 comma 0, negative 6 comma 0. In the second one, when you solved, you ended up with x squared equals negative 5. And when you take the root of that, you can't have a negative under the radical. So therefore, that would be an example of no solution because we cannot have a negative under the radical and get a real root solution. On the last one, when you solved it, you ended up with 0 over 4, which is 0. So d squared equals 0. Take the square root. Well, the square root of 0 is 0, because 0 times 0 is 0. But you don't have a positive or negative 0. So this would be an example of one solution. So in this case, my intercept is 0, comma 0. So my vertex is my intercept, which is why I only have one solution. It's on the axis. Now, if you look at this problem down here, if I were to solve this problem, I get x squared equals 5. Take the square root of 5. Now, 5 has a root. It's a positive number. It's not a negative. It will have a root, but it's not going to have a root that is a whole number. So in this case, what you're going to do is you're going to write plus or minus square root of 5. We're going to leave it as a radical. If I had to write this as intercepts, it would be square root of 5 comma 0, negative square root of 5 comma 0. Now, we're obviously, we're not going to graph this because we're not going to use calculators and we're not going to graph decimals. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't have roots. It does have intercepts. It's just not going to be a whole number intercept. So now let's put this all together into a graph. Let's graph this one together. So our a is 1, b is 0, c is negative 16. So the direction of opening is up since a is a positive number. Our axis of symmetry is x equals 0 because the b is 0. We know it's going to be 0 over a number. If I plug that in, I get negative 16 for the y of my vertex. We know this was the x of my vertex. This is the y. So my vertex is negative 16. So let's graph our axis of symmetry. Graph our vertex. We'll go by 2s. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Um, we know it goes up, so we know it's going to have x-intercepts. So I'm going to go ahead now that I know how to solve by roots, and I'm going to solve it by roots. So I'm going to add 16. Take the root, and x equals plus or minus 4. Since it's a whole number, I can use these intercepts to graph. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 4, and then I can connect my points. Now, oops, a little off. So my y-intercept in this case is my vertex. 
So I don't have a separate point for y-intercept, and y-intercept is the same as my vertex. Domain is going to be negative infinity, comma, infinity, all real numbers. And my range, since it opens up, it's y is greater than or equal to the y of my vertex, negative 6, I don't know why that happened, negative 16. And as an interval, we start from the bottom up. So our first parameter is negative 16, and it continues up to infinity.